Hello everybody, in this video I'm going to show you how to draw with the grid and snap mode technique. This force two I can set the status bar. We will see in which situations I think this method is a great alternative to the object snap and polar tracking. We will practice together with a very simple exercise. And at the end, we'll check out a couple of important tips as well as how to edit the grid and snap settings. So let's start learning. So in this tutorial we are going to draw this simple exercise with the grid and snap modes technique. And in order to help you I provide the link to this file in the description of the video. So you can try to make it by yourself along watching this tutorial for example. Now first of all I find this grid a bit dark for me and I feel I'm forcing my vision with these default colors. But ok, if you can see all the major and minor lines, you can keep exactly how they are. But if you want to change the colors, first type options at the command bar. Then go to the menu display, then click on colors. And I'm going to set the grid major lines and minor lines a bit darker. Click in this button, then go to select color. And I'm going to pull this bar a bit up. And then do the same for the minor lines. Ah, and remember that the minor lines should be a bit darker. So apply the changes and close both windows. Ah, and now I can see much better. Ok, I believe for some people this may get a bit messy with the grid too light. But if you prefer, you can set very different colors for the grid comparing to the colors of the layers that you are using. For example, here. I just put this nice magenta type color. Ok, let's go back. And now, first of all, have in mind that to use this technique, it's not enough with just a grid switched on. You can see, if I want to draw a line, I am not snapping between any points right now. So I have to turn on the snap mode as well, if I want to make this to work. So if you pay attention, you can see that right now the snap spacing is 10 mm between the closest points. And I have a major line every 5 squares, so 50 mm between two major lines. This means that I can easily tell larger distances, for example in this situation I know this new line is at 200 mm from the rectangle at the left because there are 4 squares between them and 4 times 50 is 200. So for some drawings I think the grid is actually a great method to use and you will understand that in this exercise. So we are going to start making the borderline of this figure and make sure both grid and snap modes are switched on and the object snap, I have it off because it's not necessary. Even it's not a problem if you have it on. I'm going to place the first point at an intersection of major lines because it will help me later to understand better the distances. A good thing here is that the values shown on the label are accurate, so I can click when I see 300 here. Then I go to the left and I can still type the length if I think it's more practical in a specific situation. This one is 150. Then I'm going to click in that point. And in this part below I'm going to follow a major square and then connect with the origin. Yes, it was really simple and quick. Now for the rectangles inside you will see it will be much easier. Because if I was doing this exercise using extension lines and object snaps, I would probably need to make support lines or typing distances manually. However, with the grid and snap method, it's really quick if I draw rectangles following the major lines due to the fact I know that the edges measure exactly 50 mm each, making the process faster of course. Then the square above is even easier because I only need to draw around the major lines. Finally there is one rectangle below 
I just forgot to add the dimensions in the video, but you will actually find them on the exercise file. And here, the spacing is 15, so I need to count 3 squares from these lines. Ok, so we have finished the exercise, and now it's time to learn a few important tips. Snap and grid settings. We can edit the spacing between grid lines and the points to snap in these snap settings over here. This opens the drafting window and we are at the grid and snap tab. So, at the left we have the settings for the snap and that the right for the grid. If the spacing for snap and grid matches, the pointer snaps in all the intersections of the grid. And this is very important to have in mind. But of course I can change the spacings if they are better for me. Then another thing, if the box equal X and Y spacing is ticked, and I set this snap X spacing to 20, the Y spacing updates automatically. Then on the grid spacing we can set how many small squares I have until I see the next major line. Now as an example, let's change the snap spacing to 5 and you will see that I can also snap the point in the middle of two intersections. Another important tip, especially for beginners. When you exit a line command, for example, then you realize that the pointer is not snapping. So don't get in panic that there is something wrong with AutoCAD. Okay, this happened to me when I was learning, that's why I'm enforcing this. Adjust the drawing in the grid. Sometimes it can happen that we are making a project and suddenly we realize that there is a specific section that we prefer to use the grid and snap technique. If we haven't used it yet in the project, it's almost certain that the grid will not match the corners of the walls. Look, do you see? I was right. <laughs> it's always like that. And by trying to draw lines now, the effect is not exactly what I was expecting, as I cannot snap points along these lines. Hopefully there is an easy way to solve this. I'm going to activate the command move. Ah, but first make sure the object snap is turned on, because we are going to need an endpoint. Select all the floor plan, and make sure you don't have frozen layers or locked layers, as you could mess up the entire drawing. Click in a strategic point that can be this corner and move the entire drawing to an intersection of major lines. But don't click yet, because the zoom is too small. Instead, keep zooming in without moving the cursor. And once the grid stops resizing, you can see it's getting much larger now, we are sure that now we click on the right point. So, if the distances on the project are accurate and don't have strange values, the lines will probably match the grid so you can use it to draw specific detailing. So, in conclusion, drawing with the grid and snap technique is just an alternative way to draw accurately. Some drafters never use this, and actually it's not a requirement here in AutoCAD. But in my opinion, it does help in some specific detail drawing, and especially if the objects are vertical or horizontal. On the other hand, if there are lots of curved objects, probably it's not a good option. But I think it's just a matter of trying it. And for sure you will understand in which situations it will help you, if there are any, of course. Ok, it looks like we reached the end of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you haven't done it yet, subscribe to Cad in Black. There you can find all the content of tutorials for beginners. See you on the next occasion.